this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is E3 day three or two. Listen, it's day three to me because EA had their whole EA Play bullshit. So technically, to me, it's day three. But um, it is day day three of E3. Sony is going up in twenty minutes. Um, before before I say anything more, let me just apologize. If you guys hear anything in the background, like a like a rattling sound, my little sugar glider is in its cage and it's like running in its wheel and it just I don't know. It's loud as fuck. I'm sorry. Um, but before the press conference starts, just like the other ones, I kind of want to go into what I'm expecting to see in this uh, press conference. Especially after what happened with Microsoft, mainly because I thought that um, if we were going to see Kingdom Hearts 3 or DMC 5 at E3, we would see it at Sony's. But that didn't happen. We saw it at Microsoft's, which was very surprising. And then we saw a little bit more of Kingdom Hearts at Square Enix. So, if Kingdom Hearts does appear at Sony's, it'll probably be, again, it'll probably be like a different version of the same trailer or something like that. Or just the same trailer. Um, but I still, at, like, at this point, there's really no point in wasting time for gameplay for Kingdom Hearts 3 or anything like that, because they just had their, their, um... Their event or whatever that they had like a couple of weeks back, and again, like at this point, I don't think they really want to show more of DMC Five. We are probably going to see some stuff from Call of Duty, right? Because PlayStation now has the whole thing with Call of Duty. Hopefully, they don't waste twenty minutes talking about it like they do every year, because it's a Call of Duty game. And I hate saying this, but the truth is, it is the same game over and over and over this time you can run on walls this time you can't run on walls this time it's shittier this time it's not call of duty is basically the same fucking game with a little bit of tweaks and minor adjustments here and there but at this point we don't god damn i don't i don't want to focus on it anymore i didn't want to focus on it for the past couple of years i don't want to focus on it here uh we know for a fact sony came out and said that they're going to talk about about five i think five of their first party titles which is uh well not first party but it's a first party shit is death stranding first party like if you oh god i think it is oh god i think death stranding might be first party what the hell okay huh well we know they're going to talk about death stranding last of us part two spider-man um what what is that zombie one called days gone and then the last one is uh ghost of shishima they're going to talk about those they came out and said that they will or maybe four of those out of the five, I don't know. Um, what I'm really expecting to see, which they said those are the only first parties you're going to show, and in terms of third party, what I'm expecting a while since we really gotten anything. Well, it's been a while since we gotten anything at an event because Double Fine on their YouTube channel and stuff, they are constantly putting up developer keynotes and stuff like that uh, with, with um, Psychonauts 2. And, you know, they... They go through it and show you what, how they're working on it, what they're doing. So it's not, it's not that we need the information. It's just that it would be nice to see some of it come together, like come, like really come together and see like a trailer. Probably get a release date. Maybe not. Who knows? If we do get a Psychonauts release date, it'll probably be. In my opinion, I used to think it would come out 2018, but it'll probably come out. It'll probably come out March or February of 2019. Like that's what I'm thinking. It's it just feels like that type of type of game, right? Um, what other third party shit we might see there? Um, fuck, I can't think. Oh yeah, uh, I like in my opinion, I I think if we're gonna see anything to do with RE2 remake, it will most definitely be at Sony's. It will most definitely be at Sony's, especially with the whole. Uh, the story? The story, the story, the story. I was about to say Bioshock. My bad, it's not Bioshock. Especially with the whole Resident Evil 7 like exclusivity stuff that they did with that. Um, so, yeah. 
Capcom and and Capcom and PlayStation got it got it together like that, I guess. Um, I honestly, I honest to God, I really, really hope because last year somehow it managed to get on the E3 stage. At least I think it was on E3 stage. But Danganronpa. <laughs> they had like a couple of seconds to be like by Danganronpa V3. I remember that was on stage. Um, and so, cross my fingers when they talk about VR, we'll finally get a full Danganronpa VR. And I'm hoping because you can't tease us with that demo and expect us not to want it because it was really fucking good. It was really, really fucking good. Um, what I was excited for. I, I'm sorry. God damn, I just I want more stuff for Persona. <laughs> I want more Persona stuff. We're not gonna get it, but I really wish. I really wish. We especially with uh what was just announced that um Persona the Persona dancing games are coming to us next year, even though they're out in Japan now, but man, I just want more Persona. I love Persona so much. Uh, oh god. It's so good. I, I've been with you since Persona One, baby. Anyways, um, shit, what other third-party stuff they might show off? We know they're going to talk about some VR stuff. Um, I would like to see something, something big again from Supermassive, because the last time Supermassive did anything, it's just like the little VR stuff they've been doing with The Impatient, which wasn't really that good, um, uh, fucking Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, which was... An all right rail shooter, but you tucked the Until Dawn name and made it to something that it wasn't originally. Um, and then they did a. I'm not sure if it came out already. I think it did, but what was it called? A Elite Squad or something like that? It was like a shooter thing that they did for the PSVR. Um, man, I just want them to make an Until Dawn 2, not with the same characters, maybe with different characters in a different situation, different horror themes, something like that give us more choices but i don't know um honestly is there anything else that i'm expecting to see at sony along with even before i'm trying to think real hard right now first time i was uh no action stuff actually no you know, I just haven't had like, a, if I'm gonna say like a random it's ass it's pull it's of it's shit it's that it's might it's just happen it's magically, it's uh, maybe that's not what exactly. Probably a new Sly Cooper game. But if like it like it's, it's, it's been years for Sly Cooper: Thieves in Time to come out, and then after that, it ended on a cliffhanger. And I understand that Sly Cooper is somewhat kind of now a product of its time. But gadgets and all the things. I still really want it. At least give me closure to that story, right? Hype as hell for that. Sly Cooper's dope, it's, man. I love Sly Cooper. Anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much. Uh, too mine. What am I saying? I don't want to take too much time talking up, uh, talking about my expectations and stuff like that. Um, because I've been talking for the past what five minutes or so. So I'm gonna cut away to when the press conference actually happens. I'm feeling that. And hopefully, hopefully they do it good. Yeah. Hopefully they do it really, really good this time. Absolutely beautiful, and I like. Well, what do I mean this time? They've been doing really good for the past couple of years. Well, not really good. Last year was kind of eh, but you know. Well, anyways, I guess I'll see you guys in a little bit. And suck a punch. Okay, Sony's starting right now. Come on, Sony, show me what you got. Ooh, look at this venue. It's very, it's very uh, calming, I guess. Good evening, everyone, and and welcome. Oh, he's not wearing a shirt Thank this you time. For making the time tonight to uh, to come to church. Take me to church. This, this fulfills your obligation for the coming Sunday. For those of you who need to know that. I go to church, uh, pray to the video game gods. Thanks for coming out. Um, it's great to see the congregation as large as it is tonight, under this single tent. Um, and for those of you who may be a bit apprehensive because you remember that movie Kingsman. This, it, just, it doesn't end that way. It doesn't end that way. So, but no, again, thank you. Um, and as you can see from this evening, um, here again at PlayStation, we've decided to mix it up a little bit in the way that we're doing our E3 presentation this year. You know, we look at what the stories have we tell. I mean, you guys mixed it up at PSX, and it was a shitty talk show. That was a waste of everyone's time. Live feed worldwide, and that changes our design, design ideas around what we can do for this show. So tonight. We're going to have, rather than a 
bombardment of new creative, we're going to take all of you uh, on a journey deeper into some of the key titles we've talked about before, but we're going to talk about them in a different way tonight, a, a deeper way, so you can learn about what's going on with these games and what's coming up in the future. You know, what we look at here um, at Worldwide Studios with Inside Sony Interactive Entertainment, we really want to take our love for gaming and make it sing, and make it sing very loudly. Um, it's a gaming industry, it's sometimes called, but certainly inside our studios, we see gaming as a vocation. It's a calling. It's what we do. It's what we have to do. Our teams are creatives. And it's what we do, guys. We have to do this to put money in our pockets. And places they'd like to take you. That's what we're trying to do here at PlayStation. Uh, this coming year is going to be all about those kind of games that we can deliver to you in a way that's going to blow your minds. And tonight, we're beginning here in this tent, we've, uh, this church tent we've created here uh, in Los Angeles to let you start that journey with us and let us tell you uh, our stories for the next hour or so. So without further ado, it is my great honor and my unique privilege to invite to the stage and introduce to you Gustavo Santorea. Give it up for Gustavo. I don't know who that is, but give it up for him. Another E3 press conference with music. Exactly what I wanted. Again, no disrespect to the to the uh, musicians and performers on stage. It's just we've been doing this for for the past how many years now? Three years, right? Oh, how much you want to bet that they open up a uh, Last of Us Part Two with this? Because um, in the Last of Us tra uh, well, trailer, in the Last of Us Part Two teaser, you see Ellie playing like, what was it? It might have been a banjo or a fucking, uh, how do I say that word? Acoustic guitar. I can't say that fucking word. Is it is it acoustic? That's how you say it. That's how you pronounce it. Mm. But she was basically playing some string instrument, and then Joel's all like, "You sure about this, Ellie?" You sure you want to go down this road? And Ellie's like, they're all gonna fucking pay. I'll kill every last one of them. <laughs> Here's my question. To those people who are taking out their cameras and shit during like E3 press conferences when they're standing right there, are you, do they actually, like, of course they're probably going to put it on Snap or Twitter or something like that, like, like, five seconds, five second clips, but do they actually keep, like, the whole ten minute video or whatever the hell they're recording? Because I'm pretty sure they just take the one clip they want out of it and just delete the rest, right? It's just something that I always think about when people are at some event and they're looking at it through their fucking phones. It's like, hey, guess what? Hey, guess what? Instead of enjoying the event that you're at and you paid money for, you're gonna look at you're gonna look at it through a fucking screen that you're gonna end up looking at on a different on a different source when you get back at home because whatever event you're at is probably gonna be recorded and posted online, regardless if you record it or not. You know? It's just I'm I'm sorry to get a little too real here, but it's just a thought that crossed my mind. Maybe sometimes you might wanna enjoy Enjoy the situation that you're in, right? Not situation. What's the word? I'm like, enjoy the event that you're at. Man, fucking. If I ever got up and went to E3 and spent my hard ass money to stand in a fucking convention center with a bunch of smelly ass people who never fucking wash on day one, and nobody knows what the fuck Old Spice or Axe or Dove or anything is. I'm definitely not going to spend my time looking through my fucking phone. Right? <laughs> Man, I talked through that whole entire thing. I didn't expect that to happen. That went by way faster. Sony Interactive. Uh, interactive. Sony. Did it say interactive? Shit. Went back home, jumped into bed. 44 pistol in my head. Oh, it's the venue that they're in. That's a cool transition. Well, not transition, but that's a cool thing. 
Like the venue that they're in is also the venue that Ellie is in at this like moment. That's super Ellie. That, that's Ellie, right? Yeah, that's Ellie. She has the fucking cut in her eyebrow. Of course it's Ellie. And she got the freckles. Oh man, I totally forgot that Ellie's a fucking lesbo. I mean, a lesbian. Shit, why'd I say that? Damn it. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound insensitive. I hate these things. Man, look at that dude. He got he got Asian persuasion for days. Your old man really they didn't need that. What happened? Another big lecture about my patrols. Don't go here, don't go there. It's funny how involved he gets whenever you're scheduled to go out. Yeah. She's, uh, she's put on quite the show. Yo, is it me or when I look at Ellie when she's older, I just imagine her as. I just get the image as um, Jessie from Toy Story, like the cowgirl. That's what she reminds me of for some reason. Hey, what took you so long? Oh, I'm here, aren't I? Tina? Jesse. Hey, don't forget we leave at first light. So Was that light. dude's name Jesse? Did she just call him Jesse? Did I literally call Ellie Jesse and then she called the Asian dude Jesse? Did you start with me? <laughs> okay, I have a very serious question for you. How bad do I smell? Like a hot pile of garbage. Oh. Okay. Oh. How about that? Yo, if someone was sweaty as fuck and they like did that to me, I just push them to the ground and I'll be like, get off me, don't touch me, that's gross. Every guy in this room is staring at you right now. Or maybe they're staring at all of you because fucking, I think you're the only two girls in the room. Maybe they're jealous of you. Like getting it on. I'm just a girl. Not a threat. So, PSX, we were at PSX, and when it came to Last of Us, we saw, we saw a lady getting her arm beat the fuck off by a hammer, and now, oh, okay, never mind. I was just gonna say we got, we got lady friends kissing on screen, but now it just transitioned that Ellie just slitting some dude's throat. That's cool. Who's more of a psychopath, Ellie or or Laura Croft? <laughs> All right, let's see this gameplay. Ellie got that bow and arrow. Look at that. What if Ellie just turned her head, looked at the dude hanging there, and then she's like, hang in there. <laughs> I'm so bad. Oh man, I shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh at that. If I laugh at that, I'll become the next Logan Paul. Okay. Okay. Wow. At PSX, we saw a lady get her arm beat off. At E3, 
We saw Ellie making out with her lady friend, and then her slit in the throat, viscerously. And now we see a dude just get his gut split, fucking spilled out like he's a fucking fish. But hey, guess what? It's Last of Us. If you came here expecting gumballs and rainbows, you're fucking wrong. That arrow was a one-shot. Where arrow was a bow and arrow a one a one hit and in the other Last of Us? Here's the thing. I never actually finished the first Last of Us. I always like Last of Us is one of those games that no matter how good it is, I just like I always get up to the same part and then I lose interest and play something else. So I never actually beat the first Last of Us. And I never even looked up the ending or anything like that. I just kind of... I just kind of, uh... Just kind of ignored it, really. <laughs> but maybe I should actually, uh... Go through and play the first Last of Us before even touching this. Well, what am I saying? I'm, I'm definitely gonna play through the first Last of Us before I even touch this. Man, she left that fucking hammer hanging in his fucking skull. She said, what's up, hammer bro? Uh... So here's my question. Where the fuck is Joel during this? She went into the grass. Watch yourself. She went into the grass. Beware the tall grass. Wild while a wild Ellie appeared and started ripping her skull open. Ethan. So you can go under cars. She came through here. That's cool. Double back. Go. Ooh. Yo, you better. You better get them kneecaps. You better get them fucking kneecaps, girl. Oh, she got a hole in her face now. Look at that. Ooh. Uh, Ellie still has her, uh, her, uh, her vulgar, her, vo her, her very fresh mouth <laughs> that she had in the first game, where no matter anything what happens, she'll be like, Oh, you son of a bitch! You motherfucker! Uh, fuck you! I love fucking picking up items and throwing them in games. I just love doing that. Wow, your human shield is dead now, Ellie. Man, I love doing that in the first Last of Us. Well, in the first- why am I even saying the first Last of Us? The only Last of Us we can play right now. I love doing that in Last of Us where- <laughs> where you're like, I was getting my ass beat until I grabbed me a brick and I started beating his ass. By the way, Ellie just pulled out a bullet. That's cool. I wasn't paying attention, but I'm not sure if she needed a health kit to do that. Or if it's just like maybe maybe an, maybe an ability she learns throughout the game. To just dig a bullet out of yourself with a fucking knife. Oh, that's cool. She can go in between things. That's great. Now, when I'm playing my game and I see an arrow in someone's body and I go to pick it up, will that animation play every time or will the arrow just disappear and it'll be like, you got an arrow now. I like how Ellie can go through those, uh, through those bookshelves. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god, you fucking child. He got a sledgehammer. Are you kidding me? Is that a sledgehammer? Oh shit. <laughs> Ellie, you're getting manhandled. He said, stop. Hammer time. 
I like that you can go in between that stuff. Because think of all the games where you're like, I can run in between there and then a fucking invisible wall just blocks your path. She said, no, I won't give you mercy. I'll make you suffer. Take out the knife like it's Resident Evil. Oh, shit. That's not even a knife. That's a machete. Oh, my God. Ellie, unnecessary. Unnecessary, Ellie. Welcome to E3 2018, where we watch Lara Croft and Ellie, the most psychopathic of women, just, just fucking fuck people up. Man, that was one powerful kiss to bring back all those memories, huh? What if you kissed your girlfriend every time, or boyfriend? Hey, what if you did that? Hey, what if you kissed your significant other every time, and every time that happened, you were just reminded of every fight that you've been in your whole entire life? So I remember that time where I got into that brawl in the street. Notice how there was no clap, no clapping, and like. Half the people were facing away from the screen. What the fuck was that about? Look at all, look at how all these people are interested. That was a That's creepy. The <laughs> fucking start off with a smile. Here live in Los Angeles. Smile at the camera. E3 showcase. We're taking a quick intermission while folks move uh, along. Excuse me, intermission? We'll have a little bit more to share what did you just later. say to me? And I am joined by Don't Mr. smile, Ryan don't Ryan smile at me when you say intermission. How are you? I'm good. It's such a pleasure to be here at the PlayStation. Showcase. Come on, don't don't start E3 on a good note and then ruin it for yourselves. Don't do it. When the showcase resumes, uh, and what better guest to have? for joining us about Worldwide Studios, then the chairman of Worldwide Studios, Mr. Sean Layden. <laughs> Hello, guess, sir. Yeah, good, good to be here. I thought you were just on stage. How did you get up here so fast? We created this pneumatic tube that I was dropped into you and shot right, right across to the studio here. Right yes. over here. Well, it's yes. good to have you here. Well, it's so. great to be here. And I think that was a very, uh, uh, a very powerful start. Okay, so they're gonna. There's much more to come, but I do want to zero in on the last. They're gonna, they're gonna do the whole talk show you know, thing again, aren't they? Studios, you work very That's kind of, uh, these guys need no kind of fucking lame, actually. Curious, uh, really, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. That's really. When it comes to you guys know it didn't work at PSX, right? I mean, they are, they are everywhere. They're looking at um, what can do in the next iteration of the Last of Us series. Okay. And I think what we saw tonight, I mean, that that piece of of of, of content was was so impactful. I mean, the whole relationship between Ellie and Dina going into the combat sequence really shows that um, they're pulling out all the stops over at Naughty Dog, and they're going to have a very broad and ranging game that's not going to make you only only work at it as a player, but you're going to have to just think as a person what, 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 what you're coming up against. And I can't wait to see more of that. And that was first gameplay we saw there of The yeah. Last of Us Part Two. Looking hey, obviously incredible. you want to know why people host interviews lately. after I mean, unbelievable. the press conferences God of War, which needs no so that we don't have to put up with shit like this? I mean, what is the secret? Excuse me. What are you doing over there? I was paying attention. Did he just, are they talking about God of War now? is do no harm, right? <laughs> right. In a lot of ways, my job is just to move the boulders out of the road to make sure that creative talent can get where they need to go, you know, provide backup, provide scope, you know, provide generalized, you know, advice about where we can take this as, a, as, as an industry and, 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 as, and as, a, as, as a gaming culture. But um, honestly, we've got 13 studios worldwide. Uh, we try to give them as much creative control as possible. Man, if you want to do interviews, wait till after the press conference, please. That's why you guys schedule interviews with multiple social media sites, right? Not social media sites, my bad. Um, multiple media sites slash quote-unquote game journalism. But I've been getting a whole lot. And it has to do with God of War. You know, this right. is a celebrated game. It's sold extremely well. It has a, a huge... But, man, I just... Fans. And one of the things I wanted to mention was, you know... Save the interviews for after the fucking press conference, man. Just, just well, don't even. Is this something that you and Santa Monica Studio are, are evaluating for God of War? You know, it's crazy. Uh, with the advent of social media, we've got, we get a lot of real-time feedback right. from the fans and the community. And we listen to that. And God knows...
knows my Twitter feed is, is filled up with a lot of stuff that <laughs> we could talk about here or not talk about at all. But it's all important. We take it all, all seriously. And New Game Plus is something that came through really strong, really hard through that kind of feedback loop. And I'm happy to say today that the teams are working on it. And we should have some more updates on that. We'll put that through the blog. But it's going to happen. All right. Yes. Definitely. As someone, as someone who miraculously finished God of War with a two-year-old at home, that makes me Did they just happy. spend the past so like 10 minutes here. talking about God of War? <laughs> a game that's already been out yeah, yeah, yeah. for like a month now? Are you kidding me? Amazing team at Santa Monica Studio are making that happen. Hey, if we so. can create uh, functionality and features, I love Guess that. what? We're wasting your time just to tell you that we put New Game Plus in God of War. So New Game Plus, that is confirmed. That is coming. Cool. Man. Full details on PlayStation Blog shortly. We have a lot more to talk about, too. Yeah, and actually, Sean, I wanted to ask you about that. About a month ago, mm -hmm. uh, you did something a little bit out of the ordinary for our team, and you kind of came out and talked about the four main games mm -hmm. that we would be highlighting uh, tonight's PlayStation Showcase. I was wondering what the thought process was there. Well, you know, every year we try to let the, the stories we have to tell design the experience we're going to create. And this year, we felt that um, what we really wanted to do is take people on a journey deep into the content, deep into the four big pillar games that we're working on. So right instead uh, of talking about, about um, how you want to show the content, why don't you just, I don't know, of, um, show me the content? Because uh, I'm waiting. Death Stranding and, 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 and I'm and waiting. So, so um, this year, I wanted people to know that don't come here expecting to have some big flashy new idea hello viewers it's me here come here and sit with us if with you us. need to get up and use the bathroom or make a sandwich or do your taxes please feel free to do it at this at this time games in the showcase later tonight because right now anything is better use of time they're all factors, then the teams are really crushing them talking about shit we already know or things we've already heard multiple times throughout the years and available so yeah of course spider-man so we're gonna see a lot of that tonight and i think uh, so far microsoft had the best conference <laughs> man i don't like pointing out winners or being like man they won e3 but they are definitely they are definitely some who do better and some who do worse and right now sony you're not looking pretty good some other updates for you while we wait during the short intermission and that's coming from me someone who doesn't own an xbox console the only xbox console i ever owned was the first xbox and now they're talking about call of duty and now they're talking about call of duty oh my god guys yo black ops dog we got four we got four lines now instead of three. Not one, not two, not three. We got four lines. Are these the maps from like the first Black Ops? Jungle Summit. Slums. That's Black Ops 2, right? Firing range, that's the first black yeah, that's the first black ops. That was the first black ops and it came back in three, I think. Get immediate access. Hey black naps. Remember when I said Call of Duty is more of the same? From PlayStation Store. Guess what? Welcome back. We are it's more of the same. I fucking love the transitions to when they're done showing the trailers, and it just cuts back to his smiling fucking face. It's so creepy. Welcome. What's happening? That's right. Oh man, Sean Layden became black. When did that happen? For the showcase. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. So I say we keep this moving here, and uh, when it comes to Call of Duty, we did you know that Sean Layden was actually a fusion dance between a girl and a black man? October on launch day. But what we just learned here is that those maps, those classic maps, are, are coming to Black Ops 3 as well for those who pre-order Black Ops 4 on PlayStation Store. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Um, but what if I cool. don't Call of Duty Black Ops? So if I pre-order, I get nothing right new. So I get more of the same old. Doing a Great. PlayStation Plus game Amazing. And that is gonna be Call of Duty, everyone. Black Ops 3 is coming to PlayStation Like, guess what? 
I buy Call of Duty, and I still play Call of Duty, and I still have fun with Call of Duty. But I still don't. Oh, wait. Oh, look. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is free. Guess what? If anyone was interested in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, you know, two years ago. Really cool announcements last week. When we did our countdown. <laughs> like, we what the hell? If you were, hey man, if you've been, if you've been excited for Call of Duty Black Ops 3 for the past two years, now is finally your chance to buy it. It's not like you bought it already or traded it in or anything like that, you know. It's not like Black Ops 3 is already broken due to all the shitty loot boxes they put in it because Overwatch was doing so good with its loot boxes. Boxes? Mm loot boxes but okay man i swear to God, those extra fucking weapons ruined that game black ops 3 was so good and then they were like tom put in some loot oh hey look his day's gone i don't know anyone who's excited for this game <laughs> like like i'm i I want to say I'm interested, but at the same time, I'm not really interested. Oh, is this the uh, donut thing? Yeah, this is the uh, the donut thing, the twin mirror or twin peaks, you know. And flipping death. Look like you've seen a ghost. Comes a heartfelt story. But really, who are you? Ghost giant. Yeah, Beat Saber! Look at that. Awesome. I remember when this first got announced, I looked at it and I said, this is going to be great. And then someone was like, yeah, but there's already VR Rhythm games on the Vive. And I was like, yeah, but guess what? No one's going to fucking spend, spend $900 to $2,000 to get a fucking PC back, and then your VR headset and then buy Beat Saber and all that other shit. A few minutes, I mean, we're really... <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep moving here. There was a lot of great stuff here. Oh, and we can see the crowd is seated. Uh, the people are about ready to go. This show's about to continue, about to, to move into the big event. Yeah, it was great to see the countdown stuff, but I do think that there's like maybe one more thing we can sneak in there before we cut away to the showcase. Yeah. Yeah, let's, so. let's squeeze it in. Let's, let's squeeze, it, let's it, squeeze in. it in. Okay, so this next franchise boasts a huge loyal community of nearly 6 billion hours. Incredible stat. Yeah, they play that so much. A lot. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're going to take a, a first look at the next chapter right now. Okay. Franchise 6 billion. Oh, look. It's a dying franchise. Ten long years, remember that? Man. Man, Destiny, you're, you're really doing great. So they're killing off the cool robot guy? Who's like... Who's like the fun dude? Oh, that's sad. That was like the only likable character in Destiny ever, and they killed him off. But guess what? After Destiny 2 came out, it wasn't even that good. So they killed off the most likable character in Destiny, so what's the point of playing Destiny anymore? Is that the brother of the Queen of the Awoken? Again, I haven't, like, I didn't touch Destiny 2, but from what I've heard and what I've seen, and actually I did touch Destiny 2, I played it for a little bit, but it wasn't my copy of the game. Um, but I didn't buy Destiny 2. Um, so, from what I've heard and what I've seen and from the very little that I played, I did not like Destiny 2. And I don't think a lot, I don't think other people really like Destiny 2 as much as the first Destiny. And, I know I called it a dying franchise, it's not really a dying franchise, but it's not as good as it could be. I'll tell you that, for fucking sure. Like, damn. 
think it's almost time. I Let's think go. it's almost time. Should yeah, we, we get to it? I think why keep people it. waiting? Let's get to it. We have so much okay. more to cover. Okay. Yeah, Got it. a lot more in store. Yeah. So let's check it out live right now. Cool. Is the real show starting now? Oh my god, they're doing more music? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Not once, but twice? Again, no disrespect to the wonderful performers on stage, but... Dude, really? <laughs> Two times? The instrument's called, called the pan flute, right? I'm not crazy. Whatever it is, it's fucking amazing. It's amazing, but at the same time, two musical performances? Really? Keep it short. Please keep it short. But hey, I hope this is, uh... This is probably going into Ghost of Tsushima, right? Or maybe a new Ani Musha. Oh, what if, what if, what if Ghost of Tsushima came on screen, and then above it the word Ani Musha came up, and it said Ani Musha, Ghost of Tsushima. Right? And that's the real title of the game. That'd be great. That'd be amazing. But it's not gonna happen because it's made by Sucker Punch. Fucking weeaboo! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was great. That was great. Except for that one person who seemed unenthusiastic as he looked down on his phone. Disrespectful son of a bitch. Oh. So that is gonna be the soundtrack. That's great. Give me a good soundtrack for a good Feudal Japan game. I say Feudal Japan, it's probably not Feudal Japan, I'm probably crazy. I don't know my history, man. I don't know, I'm not a scholar, I play video games, dude. Hi, my name is Yamanosuke. And this is Animusha. Man, look at this fucking weeaboo. Fucking weeb. <laughs> Man, you know you watch too much anime when you see the bamboo hat and the first thing you think about is Itachi from fucking Naruto. Man, Naruto's not, Naruto's really not that good of an anime, but I still can't help but, man, I remember that episode so well because he just fucking shows up. By the way, was that pamphlet guy, the fucking dude he just walked past? Was that dude in the game? Just hanging out like he's fucking Ninja Ninja? Man, I love how an Afro Samurai Ninja Ninja just be hanging out, just be chilling, talking shit. Looking like Stank Meter from Boondocks. Hmm. Nobu, come. That's the Japanese name for Agro. What he actually said was, Agro, come here. We're playing Shadows of the Colossus, Ghost of Tsushima. That's the full title of the game. Man, these fields look awesome, but guess what? Once I boot this up on my PS4 Pro, it's probably gonna start blowing the winds of God and making the loudest of noises. Man, you got... For those who have a fucking PS4 Pro 
and you played God of War on it, how loud did that shit get? Because mine, I've never heard my, my PlayStation 4 Pro be that fucking loud before, and it was roaring. It was like a fucking dragon, dude. It made no damn sense. By the way, the environment looks great. That dude dying doesn't look so great. Ooh, boy, you got sliced the fuck up. Okay, so this looks kind of... This looks way different than from what you expect a Sucker Punch game to have for their combat. Because when you play Sucker Punch games, and you think about their combat systems, it's just, hey, go in without a plan and just fuck things up. Right? Or it's Sly Cooper and you're just like, and you're just like, don't get caught, but if you get caught, just smack him with the cane. Just hit him with that pip cane. Homeboy got shot. Jin. You're late. You're impatient. Where's the monk? The bastards beat me to him. Wipe that Enough blood off that blade. Temple. Man, one of my most favorite character archetypes is Old Lady Warrior. Because that shit is awesome. It really is. Yo, you got Anna from Overwatch? That's great. You wanna know who's also... Not not an old lady, but more of like a an aged fighter. Is uh, the boss from Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. She is so fucking cool. Yo, and she's been through some shit, dude. That samurai stealth. I'll guard the exits. Just get that one. It wouldn't be a sucker punch game without some sort of parkour system, would it? He has a fucking grappling hook? Are you kidding me? That's cool. Please, I do not understand. Man, you better hit him with your secret ninja arts. That man got fucked up. Okay. Okay, so they basically have the fear takedown system from Batman now. It's Samurai Batman. <laughs> he called reinforcements. We have to move. Ooh. Masako. Stand aside, Jin. You betrayed my family. Run! If we fight, the Mongols win. They already won. Remember when I said I like the boss from Metal Gear Solid 3? <laughs> Look at this fucking Metal Gear Solid 3 moment! Look at this, you got the leaves falling and everything, oh my fucking god. You're in a field of petals and flowers. Oh my friend. Look at this shit. Look at that tower in the background. That's awesome. Ooh.
Yo, if that was me in a sword fight, the moment I got hit once, I would've been like, Alright, man, you got it. Chill. It ain't that serious, dog." So, my question is, are they changing stances? Hear them coming? That's our enemy. Because it looks like they're changing stances. Someone just shot a fire arrow. Oh my god, the Mongurians are coming. Put it back in her sheath for her? Never mind. That's cool. Okay, Sucker Punch. So this is what you've been working on since... Since, uh... Infamous Second Son. Oh, look. It's Project Dreams. Not Project Dreams. My bad. Why I say that? I call it Project... Man, I call it Project Dreams because I've recently been playing ukulele for the first time. <laughs> and since it's made by the people uh, who used to do Banjo-Kazooie and stuff like that, and Banjo-Kazooie is, is from Project Dreams, I, I, I inadvertently said Project Dreams. What I meant to say was, it's the game Dreams from Media Molecule. That was cool. What the fuck is this? The oldest house. Look at that future gun. You saw that gun pulse? You saw that shit? Place. There are rules and rituals. You can keep traveling. Look at that fucking future gun. Now, I'm not that crazy of a movie buff, but I know that's an actor. And I just can't remember her name. You know what this looks like? This looks like fucking Quantum Break. It literally looks like Quantum Break. It looks like Quantum Break. What? What was that about? What was that? What did I just? What was that transition? Control. Oh, so that's the name of the game? Made by 505 Games and Remy. Okay. 2019. Okay, so it's not Quantum Break, but it looks like Quantum Break. So I'm guessing Sony's making their own version of Quantum Break. Is this a rat? Are we are we looking at rat vision right now? You better run, you rat. Ooh. Stay back, sir. I've got this. Officer, you need help? What, what are you doing? Get off. No. 
Yep, it was a rat. Is this Resident Evil? Was I right? This is Resident Evil. This is Resident Evil. Fuck you. This is Resident Evil. This is the most Resident Evil look. That's fucking nasty, dude. That's fucking gross. I know those bangs anywhere. It's my boy Leon Kennedy. You look so young. Jesus Christ. Money's in my account. Always a pleasure. Attention, all citizens. Due to the citywide outbreak. Look at that shit. By mistake. Oh my god, is that Marvin? You see one of those things. Uniform or not. That's the police officer, right? Marvin, the dude who just not dies easy. right there and then he turns. Whatever it takes to save this city. Surprised you made it this far. Oh, where's Claire? Oh, let me see Claire. Please tell me Claire doesn't look like shit. Oh, that looks great. It's third person. It's behind the shoulder. Holy shit. Damn it. I mean, I expected that, but still. Oh my god, it's fucking... Look at... Oh my god, Claire. Claire has never looked so fucking beautiful before. And that was Sherry, too. Sherry Birkin. I'm guessing that's uh, Birkin's wife. Oh, let me see Birkin. I mean, not Birkin. What am I saying, Birkin? Birkin's not in two. Um, let me see Mr. X. That's Ada. That's Ada. It's coming back. Let me see Mr. X. <laughs> it's coming back. Resident Evil 2. Remake. Let me see Mr. X. Please, please, please. Oh my god, we got a release date. Yes! <laughs> That's all I needed. I'm hyped. Pre-order today. Okay. Did that say the 29th? What the hell is that guy's problem? <laughs> he's yelling. He's like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> the fuck? What was that about? Chill out, man. The game wants you to pre-order. Pre-order it. Don't tell me what to do. Mm. Uh. From Sponge Games and the co-creator of Rick and Morty. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm back. They're making another VR thing. E3 to take some looks at this new game I'm about to show you right now. Troversy. Are they making a game or another VR thing? Look. Don't play with electricity. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 there's some action platform stuff in this little piece of shit. I'm the oh, so it's not guy. VR. Okay. Bathtub, but you know, it's not about me right now. It's about this game. Whoa, look at that. That's exciting footage I just saw. Oh, I'm playing it right now. Look at me. I'm a cool cucumber over here playing this cool game. Should have saw that coming. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Somebody call 711 because that's the emergency dial number for this in this re weird part of the galaxy. Because this is a sci-fi based thing. Help! He's got electrocuted. Trevor saves the universe. What? <laughs> oh, it is a VR game. What the fuck did I just watch? Fucking kill me. Are you serious? Again? Oh my god. Oh my god. The captain is back. Again. Yep, you always did like this world. Still, I love how Goofy's like, we did like this world, but a lot of people didn't. <laughs> I was all right with Pirates of the Caribbean. I liked it. I wasn't crazy about it. I just hated how the how the whole fighting the pirates in the moonlight system was. It was a pain in the ass. But oh my god, what? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, what the fuck? Shit battles? Are you kidding me? This is the most realistic that Sora will ever look. They changed the style of the world, made Sora look a little bit more realistic, right? But the character. Are you kidding me? Power Wilds are there. Underwater expiration. See, that's what I want. 
That's what I mean when I'm talking about Atlantic is bullshit. It's a whole like open world thing. What? Is that the boss fight? That's the boss fight for the area, isn't it? You back in the organization. Look swords back? Surprising, isn't it? And he's back in the fucking pirate world. Of course he is. Sora, stand down. It's the code. Mustn't strike. It's still somewhat weird that Sora's this weird fucking anime proportionate fucking character. And look sword looks fucking for a box. Hmm. The mixtures of reality is going on there. Yep. 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 So that whole thing happens early on in the game? I wish that happened like on a second visit or something. Arendelle is safer with me staying up here. Like the whole thing where Hercules and the like and the fight on Mount Olympus? That that probably happens early in the game because Sora's Alpha didn't change yet. And the unversed collected enough. But I thought that would happen on like a second visit, like how they did it in Kingdom Hearts 2. By the way, what? You're following her. Maybe she's. What does Ventanitas want with fucking Larxene? I love you. What does Ventanitas want with children's screens? No. Ansem, you look like shit. You look like utter fucking garbage. Oh look, a Zigbar. What's up? In fact, your reward might be right around the corner. Hey, Axel. Axel's my boy. Hey, like Oh my God, Kyrie cut her fucking hair. Your hair too. Axel's my boy. What? Replica Riku? Why? Excuse me? What? Who? What? I might sell my PS4 Pro. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it doesn't look that cool. But that, all in one package, only on PS4. Yeah. That's why I said it was weird for Microsoft to show it at their fucking event. Because all of it is, all of it is on, um, all of it is on PlayStation. Oh, it's Death Stranding. Okay. That's fucking weird as shit. Order breaches. Created and developed by Kojima Productions. Tears. Chiral allergy. So, you have dooms like me. What's your level? I've got the extension factor, but I think you got me beat. You can see them, right? No, but I can sense them. Wanna come work for me? Must be tough out here on your own. I keep with that. I make deliveries. That's all. Asylums for the Feeling featuring Leela. A do? Performed by silent poets. So is that gameplay right there? Or is that still cinematics? That looks like gameplay. That looks like gameplay too. Or is there anything in the water that's gonna fucking murder me? Okay, so he can scale mountains. Mountains. It is a mountain. You can scale mountains unlike Snake and fucking Metal Gear 5. It's straight up the Metal Gear play system. Who is that? That's still Norman Reedus? Or Jesse or whatever his name is? In this game? Man, you're, you look all fucked up. What the hell is that? Well, I know what it is. It's a body, but who is that? And why? That looks like a big ass open world. All right. Gonna be visiting fucked up cities, okay? Probably got destroyed by those inv invisible monsters, invisible monsters. 
This looks like a site where the invisible monsters are. Is that a vehicle? That's a vehicle. Okay. He is carrying a lot of shit. so there's something up with his feet because it always fucks him up. Or maybe just all the traveling and shit that he does just really is a hard number on him. That was a gun. He's gonna go fuck those people up. Hand me... Wait, give me your... What? I didn't even read that in time. I'm sorry. Excuse me? What's happening to your arm? So they're doing the whole Japanese thing of like, don't breathe because they can sense you. Like, in, in Japan there's like a thing where it's like, hey, ghost can sense you by your breath. Because that's how they sense life. So if you don't breathe to them, you're not alive and they'll leave you alone. So they kind of do that type of thing. I don't know if you guys can see it on your video, but there's a invisible creature in the center of the screen, and now there's five of them. And now they're gone. Okay. Headed into town. Girl, what is up with your umbrella? Watch yourself. Those things never stay gone for long. The time full fast forwards, whatever it touches. But it can't wash everything away. The past just won't let go. I'll see you around. Sam Porter Bridges. Did her shoulder pad just grow needles? What's your status? Did you see that? Aurelium density is still increasing. My status is fucked. There's tons of them. Can you sit out the rain? No. They're closing in on my position. I have to move before they realize I'm in here. Sam. If one of those things eats you, it'll trigger a void out. You'll come back, sure, but the surrounding area will still be a crater. I got an idea. So... So there was information out there that, like, I don't remember the name of Norman Reedus' character. They probably just said it. I wasn't really paying attention all that much. But, um... He's the only person who, like, if he dies, he comes back to life. So that's not, like, a secret of his. People just know that, I guess? Oh, you're fucked. Wake up, baby child. See me through this. So is it the baby that attracts them? Do they need the fresh life? The young blood? And this is the time, the time rain that's happening right now. This is straight up like gameplay systems from Metal Gear 5. <laughs> this is a better version of Metal Gear 5. And now he's holding his breath. Okay. Alright. 
A lot of people will be happy to dissect that later. All right, girl, you were pretty. You was, you was pretty hot until you did that shit. Too late. You still don't know who I am, do you? Who? Are you? Look at all these fucking actors. <laughs> Look at all these actors. So is that, I'm gonna guess that Norman, that's Norman Reedus, uh, Norman Reedus' character's wife. I'm gonna guess who that is. Must be the lady in the picture. And her face was scratched out in that picture or whatever. Alright, so now we're... Alright. What's this? Fuck you. Team Ninja? Fuck you, this is Neo 2. They're making another fucking Neo game, are you kidding me? That's not a bad thing, that's actually a really good thing. Oh, what the fuck? Yo! What? What is this? What is this Azura's Wrath shit? Neo 2, yep. First Neo was great. Had great DLC. Good ass game. Defy Death. Death defies you. Okay. Are they gonna show off dreams? Does dreams have a release date? What the hell is this? The raft is secure, but I can't reach them over radio. Oh, this is this is Spider-Man. How much you wanna bet it's Spider-Man? Already here. Yep. There's my boy Yuri Lowenthal! I love you! It was. Let's go. Maybe it's not as bad as it looks. Love the optimism. But in my experience... So, Spider-Man is voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. It's usually worse. Look out! Oh, that's the Electrocutioner. Yuri! Hold on! So... Spider-Man is voiced by my boy Yuri Lowenthal. And in this game, he works with a lady named Yuri. That's some crazy shit right there. You okay? Yeah. Welcome to the park! Just in time for the fireworks! <laughs> Looks like we made parole, boys! Come out! Electro? Why is he letting everyone out? I'll head for the main control center and see how bad the situation is. Why is he letting everyone out? Because it's a video game, Spider-Man. We need villains. Just quietly go back into your cells and lock the door behind you. Okay? That man had blue skin. Okay. Do you think we'll see Spider-Man perform a maximum spider? I would love to see that. Is that the fucking Rhino? It's the fucking Rhino. He's in every goddamn Spider-Man game. Surprise! What is he talking about? Hey, what's your status? Me? Just trapped in a prison with every criminal I've put away in the last eight years. No biggie. Oh my god, is that Scorpion? This is too good to be true. 
Scorpion, can you hold on a minute? I was in the middle of a phone call and it was business. So here's my question, right? Both Rhino and Scorpion just got out of prison and they automatically have their suits. So did they not take that away from them? And also, where are the guards that work in this prison? Not really. Electro, Rhino, and now Scorpion are all on the loose. Why are there no guards here? Camera system's almost up. I'll give you a sit rep soon. Okay, I'll keep tracking Electro. <laughs> that man went flying. You see that shit? I love those powerful ass punches and kicks. Mostly kicks, because kicks are always cooler than punches. Come on, Spider-Man! I thought this was a chase! Gotta stop this guy. Is this the first Spider-Man game that doesn't have a slow ass wall climb? Finally we get wall runs. You tell me who I love it. For, I'll go easy on you. Can't stop it. But I'm flattered that you still try. Nobody ever takes me up on that offer. The fucking vulture. He's like, my movie did great, Spider-Man. That's why they put me in this game. All right, what other type of B-tier villains we're gonna see here? Man, I love how fucking how the Rhino and Vulture went from being Z-listers to automatic B-listers because of games and movies. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you were serious. I am serious. I have to go. Some of them are heading into the city. This is nuts. Do you think that the ultimate goal here is that he's gonna release more villains and one of them may be Venom and- well, it wouldn't be Venom, what am I saying? One of them will be Carnage. Here's my guess. If we don't see Venom or Carnage in this game, and this game does well, like it will, it will get in a sequel, and then we'll probably see Venom in the sequel, and if it gets a third game, we'll probably see Carnage as the final boss or something like that. How do you like my new suit? Dashing. Where'd you get it? It's an exclusive club. Scorpion's a cool villain. I like Scorpion. Remember, he said not to kill him. Good idea. In fact, we don't have to do this at all if you don't want to. We definitely want to. How will Spider-Man ever get out of this predicament? Lucky hit. You're all just kicking him around. Come on, Miles. Come and save Peter. You? And we're gonna leave it there, huh? I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna take a super guess. I'm gonna guess the person that just showed up is Tony Stark. And it's Iron Man. He's all like, what's up, spider, spider dude? I'm here to save you.
So does Dreams have a release date? Because they keep showing it. Okay. I'm going to guess that's the end. Ended kind of abruptly, actually. Yeah, I'm going to guess that's the end, huh? Cool. Okay. That was the PlayStation E3 showcase. A well, again, there was a ton of great worldwide. That was fun. Share here. Question mark. First live gameplay of Marvel. Because you have the. We have a new game to announce. We have some other stuff to talk about. Okay, so they are done. All right, that they are done. They're they're doing into like afterthoughts now. Okay. Um. That was kind of. Absolutely. I don't know. It feels the same as last year's E3. Yeah for sony really absolutely yeah where <laughs> it's kind of mad because you have exciting announcements like re2 and more spider-man shit that we get to see and a full an actual trailer for death stranding right and you get that, oh, that so but re4 style over the at the same time it's just like the, the, i don't the know it still feels like it's remake. lacking just like last year's to me nice and gory i mean of course i'm excited about the shit that i've seen there um i'm trying to think is there anything that was there that i didn't want to see well i could have done without the whole talk show shit that they did kind of an illusion to a lot and and kind of the whole Call of Duty thing, but they really didn't spend that much time on it. But they really had no business talking about God of War, a fucking game that came out like a month ago. Just like spending 20 minutes just to say, hey, New Game Plus is coming. You could have just put that on Twitter or something, you know? But um, everything else was kind of good, really. I mean, there's nothing really bad they showed. It's just really short. Really short. It happened really fucking fast. Um, control. Yeah. Man, I trailer really looking to just I, I don't more about that one. I mean, it just looks like I don't really have nothing to say, really. <laughs> I just kind of feel like I exist right now. <laughs> you know, I feel like this conference just existed and I existed at the same time. We have these like, don't get me wrong, RE2, really excited for it, but then at the same time, it's RE2. We know what we're mostly getting. If you played RE2 well, before, Sony's E3 right? Press conference, there was the one thing that I'm probably not excited about when it comes to RE2 is those fucking spiders, man. I don't deal with that shit. Those giant ass fucking tarantulas in the goddamn sewers. Jesus, I'm not going to be excited for that. I really don't want to see that. But it's going to be in the game because they got to keep it true to the fucking game. But damn it. And that's the only thing I don't want to see. Obviously we didn't play, but I in RE2, everything else is everything else is is it's all there. It's great. It's RE2. RE2 is a great game. One thing that really um, was how we saw some more stuff for Kingdom Hearts. I'm really excited for that, but at the same time, I still feel like I lost something watching that. And the way she was in a sense of me personally when kingdom hearts 3 comes out i kind of want to go in cold it seems i don't want to know what all the worlds are going to be or what all the bosses are going to be or who's going to appear right like i would have been way more excited if larxene just came the fuck out of nowhere when i'm playing the game or you know or we saw Axel and Kyrie. Speaking about Axel and Kyrie, hold on, let's just say something right now first of all axel is my boy favorite character in kingdom hearts ever not a threat for reasons. Well, yeah, it was like, um, but they and the, the, the and who's yeah. what is up with um, and then with the obsession in that game of character is now older. They have a haircut now. Riku has cut his hair like twice now. And Kairi like just cut her hair. And Sora, technically he has a new hairstyle. Like, if you look at it, it's different from Kingdom Hearts 2. So, I, uh... There's some weird obsession with, like, haircuts in that game. That and, of course, clo clothing changes, but... Come on, man. They're clothes. They're cool. Right? Kingdom Hearts 2 clothes for Sora is probably the best clothes. I still like the Kingdom Hearts 2 outfits for everybody better. Well, besides Kairi, because Kairi's outfit makes no fucking sense in Kingdom Hearts 2. It's like a weird-ass one-piece skirt thing. Like one piece dress with like a zipper down the middle and weird pockets on the side and 
and it's way too fucking short. That was so goes so like it doesn't make any fucking sense. But um, but like this shows that I mean this. Man, I'm excited for Kingdom Hearts three. It could be a bespoke because like the I've been waiting. I've been waiting in that as well. The way it does. I've been waiting. Like the the kiss. But let's not talk about Kingdom Hearts. Um, tender moment. What else? I find it weird that they kept showing off. Pro uh, I, I want to say Project Dreams. It's not called Project Dreams. I, uh, they kept showing off Dreams, but yeah. I think, does that game have a release date? Throughout this game, like if if that's like because it's weird to show off like some things from a game, but never actually show off the game itself. Um, it's nice that the Rick and Morty dudes are doing another game. This, this girl. I mean, Account of VR is fun. It was a fun short thing. So was the Rick and Morty VR experience. Uh, DLC after. And um, behind. now they're doing. What's it called? Trevor saves the universe. Um, I've been here before. I've had this. I mean, that looks fine. Ended in total heartbreak. I. I don't know if that's VR only because it did say PSVR on it. But um. She's gotten a lot older too. And. But. I guess it's exciting. I mean, I don't know how to feel about it, to be honest. Uh, like, I'm happy that it's there, but at the same time, I'm not. It's, it, like, ecstatic that, that it's there. Um, Neo 2. Very exciting. That's cool. First Neo was great. Great DLC. It was, like, we thought it was going to be a, a failed attempt at a Souls game. Souls-like game. Like how Lords of Fallen was kind of a failed attempt. But no, it hold up strong and it was great. It's a great game. It's awesome. If you haven't played it yet, I highly suggest you go and play it. It's really fucking good. Like, it does a really good job of, like, taking, like, historical things that actually happen and care and people who existed within the same time period and putting them all together. Like, it's it kind of did it the same way that, that Assassin's Creed Syndicate did it, but better, <laughs> right? Um, way fucking better than Syndicate. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima looks fucking amazing. That game looks really amazing. Like, I like Sucker Punch, I like their work, Sly Cooper Infamous is awesome, but I've always wondered what the fuck they've been doing since Second Son, I haven't heard shit from them, at least I don't think they did anything since that, but now that we actually see what the project is, it looks great. Last of Us Part 2. Like I said, I know, I'm not sure if that's necessarily the case. Like uh, definitely, definitely like way, that, uh, way, way darker than but the yeah, first I, Last I, of Us. I can tell that already. I, I think like, it's, happy, you gotta be an idiot uh, not to tell that. Especially this part here where they fucking just gut the dude like they're goddamn in Game of Thrones or some shit. Um, yeah, I don't really want to talk about Last of Us Part 2 that much because I never beat la the first Last of Us. So, I don't want to talk about something that I don't know about. But am I excited for Last of Us Part 2? A little bit yes and a little bit no. Mainly because I didn't, again, I didn't beat the first Last of Us so I don't see the the full appeal of it coming back and honestly when it comes to last of us like from what from the sense that i got from whenever i played the first last of us and whenever i would go back to it and end up at the same part and just kind of like not feel like playing it again uh it's still like at least from what what, I, what i've seen and what I've heard, I don't feel like much has changed. Um, Last of Us One in terms of games. It seems like The Last of Us has a complete story already. So to add on to like the pre-existing characters, a ton of changes. Yeah, like it's kind of a landmine of sorts where you can easily fuck it up. In the first game, there are a lot of like because obviously right now they're ma again they're making kind of like showed they're making Ellie way way darker than Joel would ever be right because Joel was kind of like get the job done dudes down it's over right I don't think Joel ever had obsessive violence like how Ellie's just like right here she takes the hammer from this lady and leaves it inside this fucking dude's skull and also right look at that 
bam, right there. Like, Joel never really had that. Joel was like, the job's done, get it done. And I understand that the first Last of Us, again, from what people have told me, is that the full story is about... It's more about Ellie than Joel, in the sense of it's about this little girl in this fucked up world losing all innocence because that's the world that she's born in and she has to adapt and survive to it i feel like getting to uh but at the same time after that story is told adding on to that companion may just for most time and i think may just make her another lara croft like like now the new tomb raider shadows of the tomb raider is feeding into the fact that people are like yo lara croft is fucked up she's crazy but i don't want that to happen for last of us i don't want them to take ellie and make her like a crazy fucking psychopathic lunatic killer right so immersion break like i want her to kill for survival like what joel probably does because in the first last of us joel goes like i've been on both sides good and bad uh let me tell you something dead but even though he says good and bad there is no good it's just survival so so yeah i don't want to get too deep into it because then again i'm talking about something that i don't know that i don't know about a hundred percent but this is just what I feel about it. Um, what else did they talk about in that press conference? Uh, went over Kingdom Hearts, went over... They didn't show no Days Gone. They showed like a little bit of a sizzle reel and Days Gone gameplay was in there. Well, not gameplay, more like some of the parts of the trailer was in there. But they didn't show any Days Gone. Hey, uh, fucking obvious way, right? Death Stranding. I'm be honest. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm excited for it. Can't wait to see what happens. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at when that game shows up. I don't know. I try to understand it, and at this point, there's no understanding that game until it comes out. So I'm just not gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna say I'm excited for it. Can't wait for it to come out. Gonna play it. In a similar way. And yeah. That, that that's really it. Um, <laughs> is there anything else? Fuck, is there anything else? Uh, I think I'm good for now in terms of how I feel about what I just saw. Like, again, I think I said this in one of the last, um, one of the last videos, but if I feel like I need to go back and make another video addressing what we saw at A3 and how I feel about it, like after everything has set in and, and I had some time to clear my mind and think about things that I've seen and try to interpret them, uh, then I might make a video, but I, I'm not really all that sure. But, but yeah, I mean, that was Sony's E3. It was great. So, as always... Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, all that good, fun jazz. But most importantly, in the comments below, tell me what you, tell me what you're excited for in terms of what you saw from Sony. And if it's Death Stranding, please tell me, please tell me what what is Death Stranding in the comments below. I d I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Um, but yeah. So tomorrow is Nintendo's thing. They're uh. I feel like they've they. I don't know what to call. It. Is it E3 Direct? Is that what we're calling it? Are we calling it an E3 press conference? What are we calling it? I don't know. Um, but Nintendo's gonna have their thing tomorrow. We're probably gonna see Super Smash Bros. Because we know we're gonna see Smash Bros. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm, at this point in time, it's like, what, 10.30ish, something like that. I'm just gonna go to bed. That's what I'm gonna do. Sound effect. I'm gonna I'm a play some more ukulele and go to bed. So, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's it. The real question to